Welcome to Thirsty Thursdays with a Therapist. My name is Jaleesha Gatling. I'm a therapist here in New York City. And every Thursday, you guys can catch me here talking about different ways that you can quench the thirst in your relationships. Today's topic is, are you listening? Are you listening? I'm not talking about in terms of your relationship. I know I've been doing a lot of videos and blogs around listening to your partner, helping them to hear you, helping you to hear them. Today, I want to talk about listening to yourself. Okay, um, I want to talk about do your core values, the things that you really value and believe in, do your values align with the way that you are moving through life, with the way that you are living your life? Because a lot of times we will find ourselves feeling um, symptoms of depression or anxiety or just inner conflict because what we truly value is not in alignment with the way that we are living and moving through life. And that might include things that we are putting up with or not speaking up against or standing up for um, that, that can create that sort of inner turmoil. And so let me give you an example. So let's say that every Sunday night before you go to work, um, you have to go to work on Monday. Let's say every Sunday night you find yourself uh, having knots in your stomach. That's something to pay attention to. That's something to, to, to listen to. And while you might know on a very surface level that, okay, I don't wanna go to work tomorrow. My boss is, is insane and drives me nuts or I got this coworker who just makes my day so difficult and I am just not fulfilled at this job. So that's why I'm feeling kind of antsy and I'm having knots in my stomach. You have to listen to your body and those sort of physical symptoms as more than just, oh, I hate my job, this is the way it is. You are not, in fact, living your life to the best of your ability. You're not being able to tap into the best of you under those circumstances if you are staying in a career or a job that makes you so miserable that you are physically having symptoms and having anxiety at the prospect or the thought of going in in 12 hours or so, right? And so what would listening to that be? Listening to that might not necessarily mean you leaving the job or quitting the job. It might mean you taking actions of looking at other jobs. It might be you spending some time online seeing what uh, what job openings are available that might be more aligned with, with uh, a fulfillment filling career uh, that might not feel so draining. It might be you having a talk with your boss. It might be you actually standing up for something that is going wrong at work that's not ethical or that's just not working for you. It might be you setting healthier, firmer boundaries. Listening to yourself can result in a number of actions, but there has to be action that has to go hand in hand with the listening, okay? It doesn't work for you to just say, oh, I'm feeling really anxious because I hate my job, but like, what are you doing about it? Are you listening to yourself? We so often stifle our voices in our relationships, with our family, at work, uh, because we don't want to cause conflict. We don't want that tension. We don't want to be the, the maybe the misfit or the one that, that uh, is not with the majority. Maybe we, um, we have a different, a different idea of the way that things should be or what works for someone else doesn't work for, uh, for us. And we have a hard time maybe standing alone in something that we really value or that's really important to us. And so that is a matter of not listening listening to yourself, stifling your voice. Now, what does that lead to? That oftentimes leads to some of the things I mentioned before, depression, anxiety, um, high stress. You end up taking out and manifesting uh, that, that energy, that negative energy into other areas of your life usually. Maybe you're miserable at work, but maybe you're also coming home and snapping at your kids because you didn't eat lunch today because you don't eat lunch at work because that's just not part of the work culture. You hate that. Maybe you bitch about that to your friends on the low or you're on Instagram posting passive aggressive memes, but you're not actually listening to yourself by saying, you know what, forget this. I'm going outside. I'm going to have lunch in Bryant Park for a full hour and I will be back. That's taking action, that's listening to yourself. So uh, I, I want you guys to really take, take a minute and ask yourself what ways you might be neglecting yourself and stifling your voice and not living to your full potential, not living in a way that you experience yourself positively. And think about all the, the hours and time that we spend in different spaces at work, with family, with friends. I mean, it could be a matter of you uh, continuing to surround yourself with people who 
drain you. Maybe you need to, you need to, maybe you've outgrown some friendships and, and they're draining to you and they're toxic and they don't add to your personal growth. You are indeed stifling your voice and not listening to yourself by continuing to engage in those interactions or in those friendships or not setting much firmer boundaries to not engage in those dysfunctional cycles. And so that's what I mean when I say, are you listening? Are you listening to yourself? Because this goes much further than just you maybe not being satisfied or fulfilled, but it impacts all of your relationships and how you experience so many different pieces and parts of this beautiful life that we have. So um, uh, another thing that you might do uh, in trying to cope with, with not living a life that is aligned with things that you value is you might start coping in ways uh, that are not so healthy by drinking, trying to fill the void. Maybe you're going out a lot um, to excessive happy hours. Maybe you're overworking and you're staying late because you don't wanna go home to your partner because it's a really toxic situation there. Um, and trying to fill those voids, you are simply leading yourself um, down a path of infidelity. And no, I'm not talking about cheating on your partner or the sort of infidelity that probably comes to mind when I say that word. I'm talking about cheating on yourself, self-betrayal. That is something that I, I think about a lot. And um, it's something that I see come up with a lot of my clients where they're maybe coming in presenting that they're having issues with their partner, but the issue is really that they have betrayed themselves. They have stifled their voice. They are not living a life that is in alignment with what they value. So I think it's so important that you are aware of, of how stifling your voice, not listening to it, not taking action can really lead to you betraying yourself and um, can impact so many other parts of your life. So I want to continue this conversation next week on the cheater in you, where we're going to talk more about self-betrayal, what it can do to you, and what you can do to prevent from going down that road at all. Um, I hope that you guys got something out of this. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys want to hear more about. I'd love to get feedback on things that you guys would like me to talk about in future Thirsty Thursdays. Uh, look out for next week, The Cheater and You. And also, guys, check out my blog, The Cheater and You, huh? Um, where I talk a lot about self-betrayal. But I'm going to build on that in the next video. So tune in for that next Thursday and have an awesome rest of the week. Bye.